what's up everybody and welcome back to the channel in my build video from wednesday where i showcased a new techno build using the borealis set i mentioned that i plan to create a series of videos each one focusing on one of the four characters that we have in outriders and specifically looking at how the buff patch which is now almost a week old uh, affected these characters and how it might have changed certain builds that i use and essentially create a video that has the viable builds according to me or the fun builds to play according to me per character this is the first in that set of four and it focuses on the trickster i kind of decided to sort of do it in a way where we go from like the classes that i play the least to the classes that i play the most i just figured that would make the most sense for me so as mentioned today's build video is going to be covering the trickster um and what we have is we have one ap or or anomaly power focused build and then we have one bullet uh or firepower based build one of them is a lot more affected by the buff patch than the other one but basically if i build a trickster or if i play a trickster i use one of these two builds to essentially play it. this video is going to be a little bit longer than usual but my basic point is that uh, after this, I would imagine that I've essentially covered all of the builds that I want to play and unless new mods are introduced into the game or new content is introduced into the game or a drastic change is made to the current stuff that we have in the game, I don't imagine that I would change my mind very much with, with, uh, you know, with regards to builds. So the idea is that this is a one-stop shop for you in terms of a build for a specific character, in this case Trickster, but without any further ado, let's jump right in. So before we actually start diving into the two builds, I thought it would be good for us to just look at exactly what was trained for the Trickster with this uh, buff patch that uh, the developers released. And specifically, if we look at the section here, which is for the Trickster, we see that the three affected skills that uh, they targeted was Borrow Time, Slow Trap, and Time Rift. Time Rift definitely got the most love, and that's also why... Uh, actually to be honest i was usually using it before in in a build but it's just really really good right now but again borrowed time simply just had its cooldown dropped by a, a flat amount of seconds making its cooldown quite fast now with a with a base of eight seconds slow trap also had its cooldown its overall cooldown reduced as well taking it down from an extremely slow recharge of 30 seconds to 21. The idea here being obviously that both of these skills are probably very underutilized. I mean, I know I don't really use them. Um, and so the idea here is just to make them more attractive, I assume. However, when we look at Time Rift, you can see that Time Rift has had its global cooldown reduced as well by 3.4 seconds, dropping it down to 12 seconds before any cooldown reduction adjustments. And then what it has then received are some modifications to some of the mods that you can have on it, especially a little bit of pain, which had its dot damage increased as well as its dot duration basically squeezed together. In other words, it delivers its damage quicker uh, um, to get you to the full level of the damage. I think it used to be, well, yeah, it says it used to be 10 seconds, so it's actually dropped it down to six and then time crap uh, time crap yeah well i mean that's that's not a bad name for that mod because it's shit but time crack essentially gives you increased armor and resistance debuff uh going from 25 percent to 35 percent but then the one which is really really good as well is pain transfer which is kind of like a mod that you sort of should definitely use if you are using time rift and this increases the weapon cleave damage provided by this mod to 20 percent up from 10 percent, so it's basically double as good as it was before however the first build that we're going to look at here today is the anomaly power build of the two now for this one the skill setup that i use does not actually use any of these three skills that we just talked about right now so you're not really going to be benefited by the buff patch per se but however this does have a carefully selected group of mods and this is probably the most efficient way of building this if not one of the most efficient ways of doing this but the idea of this build is obviously that it is an anomaly power build and that it focuses around using essentially oops i'm definitely trying to click that like 15 times it focuses around the interaction between temporal blade venator's knife and then of course using hunter prey to make yourself very mobile and move around the map 
Uh, the idea is obviously some kind of like a space ninja or something like that, I suppose is the right way to put it. But again, like I said, your big damage, your 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 massive, you know, hits are going to be coming from, you know, uses of temporal braid and obviously also setting up really big hits with Venator's knife because of the buff that it gives when it hits something. And then, as I've mentioned, Hunter Prey allows you to just jump and dart around the map. Um, I would say that this build is is definitely suited for for solo play, but it absolutely shines in in co-op because of the way how you can then sort of like just move around and not be the main focus of attack you know maybe uh with another character drawing most of the aggro or something like that which will allow you to kind of like be the ninja that the build wants you to be but if we go and we start with weapons as we usually do uh of course this employs the the very common sort of combo that you see when it comes to ap based classes and that is that you are going to be having moaning winds and fortress in your second slot on an animoy you are going to be using torment and agony with something like moaning winds and and well it's default of clip combustion and the 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 idea being that you kind of use this moaning winds combo to to get yourself out of trouble or if you need to be dealing a little bit of extra additional damage i will say however that generally speaking this pushes out such big hits that i don't really often find myself employing this combo so it's really more like a fallback or if you're in trouble uh if you if you for instance miss with um with a temporal blade or something like that but i mean when playing the class for a little bit uh, those kinds of problems shouldn't occur uh as a main of course i'm using death shield with fortress and shadow comet i'm a huge shadow comet fan because of the fact that you can hip fire the shadow comet and hit multiple targets almost like an aoe and each one of those uh, um, comets also do aoe to everything around it so it's got massive clearing potential which is fantastic it, it does a decent amount of damage and i also uh like the fire rate of the, the the death shield so that's basically just what makes sense to me now if we go over to the armor this employs of course the edge of time set and the reason for that being that the edge of time set gives a flat 100 percent bonus damage boost to temporal blade if you have the three piece bonus it also gives the same bonus to cyclone slice but i do feel that uh when you are building this kind of character you kind of have to go all in on temporal blade or all in on cyclone uh, i really haven't found a way to do both and do both skills justice with the correct correct set of uh mods to basically make it you know more attractive but on the headpiece here i have anomaly power uh cooldown reduction and skills life leech that is pretty much the I would say the dream setup that you want you absolutely obviously want anomaly power you absolutely want cooldown reduction because it's imperative that your cool that your cooldowns are as low as possible so that you can use those skills as fast as possible and then uh, skills life leech obviously just keeps you up uh, much longer your other options here of course being something like status power and so but that you know not really being beneficial for this particular setup so skills life leech is definitely your best uh, your best third option there I'm using double slice you know, which actually comes on the goggles which basically means that a small additional a damage slice happens after a temporal slice um, and I'm using radiation jump which is great because whenever you target something and jump on it it actually applies vulnerable to it and usually the combo here is going to be something like you're gonna you're gonna throw a venator's knife and then you're gonna jump on something which is gonna apply the vulnerable on it so now it has the venator's knife debuff on it and it has the vulnerable on it and then you're gonna slice it and that's just gonna deal a shitload of damage when we go over to the chest piece the chest piece again here you can see it's anomaly power cooldown reduction and skills life leech which is the trifecta you want i have cut loose on you which takes 20 percent off the cooldown of temporal blade which is phenomenal and then i have unstoppable force on here now unstoppable force basically increases your anomaly power by 50 percent of your resistance piercing and another thing that you're going to see as we go through the gear but also more importantly when we get to the class tree is that this build focuses on essentially double stacking your resistance piercing which then consequently increases your anomaly power which then consequently overall increases your damage um the other benefit that you get from having a lot of resistance piercing is it means that you know mobs that have shields or you know any kind of resistances uh brood mothers that cast like a sh like uh that um resistance spell on them uh this is just going to cut right through that so you're really not going to have a problem with taking down big targets with with big health pools when we get to the third piece that's the pants so the yes we we've got our second piece of the set 
Uh, and on here again, anomaly power, cooldown reduction, skills life leech. It's the good shit. Uh, Captain Antonia for additional damage to elites, and then strong slice here, which is just additional uh, damage, additional skill damage to that temporal blade. This is important because Temporal Blade is the bread and butter of this build. It is the, the workhorse of the build that deals the most damage. So anything that you can do to just boost that up is just going to make all the difference. Gloves, same thing. Anomaly, cooldown reduction. Here I have status power. I want skills life leech in here. But unfortunately, at this moment in time, I haven't managed to get just the right one to drop yet. This has Slasher on it, which is really, really important for this build as well because it allows a second use of Temporal Blade before it goes onto cooldown. And on here, I have power assimilation, which gives me additional anomaly power for each elite on the battlefield. This is kind of like a free slot for you where you can put in any kind of additional damage or, you know, mod or anything like that. Or if you find that you might be struggling with survivability, which I don't have an issue with with this build, but I have played it a lot. I do understand so people have told me that uh, they kind of struggle to stay alive with this build or they, you know, they struggle, they lose like shields and everything like that so um this can be like a free slot for you for you essentially you can lose a little bit of your damage and you can make yourself a little bit more survivable um when we get over to the legs that's of course or not the legs rather the, the feet that's the last piece of the edge of time set here here i have temporal armor on which boosts my armor by 50 percent for each affected enemy once you do a swipe of temporal blade this is massive it means that the minute you use that skill on two or three or four mobs you are just ridiculously stacked in terms of armor and you take significantly less damage from them which is fantastic um this by the way has the roles of max health cooldown reduction and skills life reach on here so this is missing the anomaly power but it does give a little bit of that additional survivability with the health there of course health was a stat that was tweaked by people can fly studios a while back to be much more you know beneficial to you than it used to be i think it was essentially almost increased by 50 percent you know it's a it's it's total volume so i think before the maximum you got was 2800 max health something like that now it's up to 4.4 and then the second mod on here is of course no resistance against the fortified now this again says increases your resistance piercing by 50 percent of your armor piercing all of this is going to make sense once we go to the actual class tree but then just to sort of circle the wagons on this then we have a 6.9 second temporal blade so every 6.9 seconds you have access to two temporal blades and every 6.3 seconds you have a venator's knife available and again every 6.9 seconds you have a hunt the prey available now where the, the the real science of the build comes in of course is in the class tree itself because you are going to be going bottom tree because you want to be boosting your anomaly power and highlights here are basically that you want to be picking up resistance piercing wherever you can go the point being that just by standing here we have a flat resistance piercing of 20 percent and we have um, a armor piercing okay well of zero so we've got the 20 percent resistance piercing here and zero percent armor piercing okay but then as we look at some of these skills here you'll see that most of them like for instance counter shield and like for instance combat shields timeline these are all about you using your skills and then them giving you additional buffs this this particular setup here is a buff monster where at any given time depending on which skills you're using you have two three or four buffs that are affecting your anomaly power and if you've spent any amount of time on reddit or any and checking you know people that have tricksters that have upwards of 850 to 950 or even a million ap this is the build that does that because of all these buffs and how they stack up this is the one that easily stacks up to those high numbers now uh the the the, the big point of this and and and, and so all of these all of these ones here you can see you're just picking them up because you want to be getting as as much as possible additional anomaly power but here's where the trick of it comes in leap of the clincher says that activating your movement skills increases your resistance piercing by 25 percent so what and that hap and that's for 10 seconds and that's basically once you you hit hunt the prey now the other thing also is that at the end of any damage skill so basically after you've used your first uh, temporal blade uh, as an example then you, it, this increases your armor piercing by 30 percent and resistance piercing by 25 percent now what you have to remember is you have these two mods here you have unstoppable force and you have no resistance against the fortified and these two are feeding into each other by working off your resistance piercing and both of these increase your anomaly power due to what your resistance piercing stats are 
and whenever you use ability dealing damage uh, or damage dealing abilities rather that was a tongue twister um then of course these skills in the back here uh sign of the void and leap of clincher come into play so this is essentially how your your damage scales up so your first temporal blade will hit the softest of your skills if i can put it that your second temporal blade hits like a mac fucking truck because all of these mods will basically be like stacked in on it then plus you've used venator's knife you've left onto something everything like that so you have all these stacking buffs everything like that on top of it but that's basically it that's the idea of the build and again like i said not really affected so much by the buff patch but an extremely lethal and efficient version of an ap build for the trickster definitely give it a try uh, i guarantee you won't be disappointed Alrighty, so then when we come to the second build that we're going to look at and this is a firepower based build then we will actually incorporate time rift into the build uh, and just it, it adds so much utility and just increases the overall effectiveness of this build so much but uh, just as a sort of overview to start out with the idea of this build is obviously focused around shotgun combat and essentially again darting around this is kind of like the trickster's bread and butter and that's darting around the the the, the, the how can you say battlefield using hunter prey to move in behind clusters of enemies and essentially you know using it a as a get out of shit card but also as a way for you to engage enemies and also in this particular case because it's a firepower build you're also using it as a reload mechanic which we'll see once we look at the mods but uh just covering the skills of course we're using twisted rounds because this is a bullet based build we're using time rift as i've mentioned and then lastly we're using hunter prey and that's your skill play um your twisted rounds is on a 15.6 second cooldown which is great if you do lose bullets you don't have to wait that long to get them back but again by learning the ebb and flow of combat with this build and when to use hunter prey to reload your gun as well as one the other you know reloading mechanism that we have built into the the, the build uh, you should be able to maintain bullets at all time at least that's the idea of the build time rift is essentially your you know cc ability and it's on a 6.4 second cooldown which is super low and it basically allows you to disrupt bosses dealing damage large groups of enemies dealing damage it's also a fantastic tool to get yourself out of trouble so if you have a bunch of things that jump on you or, or kind of trap you in a corner or anything like that once you hit them with time rift they're suspended in the air and you can move freely out from under them or basically away from them and then hunter prey is on a super low cooldown of 4.8 seconds and this is essentially as i've said your either get out of jail free card or your way to essentially start a engagement now as usual we'll start with the weapon uh, and in this particular case as with most bullet skills it does or builds rather it doesn't really matter what's in your secondary slot and in your pistol slot because you'll never be changing to them so again this is just window dressing you can put anything on your back here um in the case of the shotgun i have a very high roll death shield uh and i'm using fortress on you and killing spree now quick 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 point on killing spree and what your other options are there again the idea is you want to ramp your damage up as much as possible killing spree is really good for that which means that every minion that you or mob that you kill after the first one ramps up your damage by 25 percent capping at 75 percent and Dark Sacrifice is an alternative that you can for sure use here because Dark Sacrifice just gives you that flat 75 straight from the beginning as soon as you start the combat with the only downside being that Dark Sacrifice slowly drains your life as long as combat goes on. In my opinion, when you are rolling this bold and you're going solo, I think that Killing Spree is superior to, to, to Dark Sacrifice and that's simply because you have more survivability and the point is that this kind of like thing that you have to kill two mobs or well rather three mobs to get to your 75 percent is not such a big deal uh because most often than not you're not going to be fighting a boss by himself a boss will have ads around it and you can hit the three ads and then you know uh step on the boss um the killing spree buff in any case lasts for 20 seconds which is a huge amount of time so you usually have more than enough time to kill whatever is bothering you in the time that that buff is up i would then say that dark sacrifice is fantastic in co-op scenarios where you kind of like don't have to worry about being the single focus of damage from enemies and therefore the already life draining effect that you're seeing coming from dark sacrifice is not that big of a turn down um 
the reason why i favor the death shield is because the death shield of course has fortress but you could use any other shotgun and just put fortress on there fortress of course just kind of like a mod that you have to use just because of the just sheer increase of damage that you get from it but the main reasons why i enjoy the death shield is because it has a high rate of fire and it has a fast reload it has a two second reload plus it is the automatic shotgun narrow version which has a range of 17 meters and that also comes into play meaning that you have a little bit more space that you can engage things from before you see a massive you know uh, damage drop off now when we get to the gear i'm not actually using any specific set in this i am however using the tanner's hat because tanner's hat comes with firstly comes with exactly the three um sub stats that you want with this build but secondly it also comes with stay into the barrel so that's just the free slot that's already taken care of the name of the game with this build and with playing this character is close range damage you're going to be jumping in behind stuff you're using a shotgun you're going to be engaging everything in close range so you want to be stacking your close range damage as much as you can and stare into the barrel definitely does that plus as i've said your three sub stats being bonus firepower which is a no-brainer close range damage and then cooldown reduction this is the the holy trifecta for this build because you want your skills as low as possible and you want to boost your damage as much as possible for the second uh, mod i'm using sharp eye on here again this is just about ramping up your damage so sharp eye when you aim down sights um and you kill enemies it increases your firepower by a flat rate and this can stack up to three times which is phenomenal when we go over to the chest same thing so bonus firepower cold stress damage cooldown reduction all five of these pieces i'm not going to keep saying it over and over have those three subsets on and that's why i have such extremely low cooldowns with my skills but that's also why my close range damage is stacked so high with a firepower stat of 193k once these buffs start rolling in you go all the way up to about 280 to 320k of firepower damage which is massive it melts stuff in like three four five shots possibly one shot um on the chest piece we have geiger's wave which is the first time with mod that we have on here this says that every enemy affected by the wave goes into a vulnerable status which is also really good because that just means additional damage now pain transfer is one of the things that was affected by the patch the buff patch so pain transfer is essentially like a way for you to prop things up with a time rift and then by putting all your damage into one thing that's caught by the time rift all of most of that damage is then shared with everything else that's also caught in the same time rift. this skill pain transfer was buffed so now it is significantly more effective at actually sharing that damage and you can often find situations where if you hit a cluster of enemies and let's say let's say let's use the example of perforo so there's five or six small perforo and you hit one of the bigger ones what you can essentially do is just shoot the bigger one and all the six smaller ones will die as well due to this pain sharing or pain transfer that you're doing uh because of time rift when we get to the pants i have bloodlust and damage absorber on here i like using damage absorber because of the fact that that flat armor of 52k and the resistance of 10 percent is just there regardless you don't have to do anything to get it it's one of the reasons why i prefer using damage absorber over mitigation from death mitigation from death requires you to actually shoot and kill things to start stacking that armor whereas damage absorber just has that armor and resistance right there from the beginning for you so it's all good bloodlust is the same as sharp eye so it's just another way for you to ramp up your damage this this however just you know giving you additional firepower just from killing shots just from killing things when we get to the gloves we have long range on here for the time rift time rifts range by default in terms of game distance i would say is probably something like i want to take a stab in the dark here and say between five and seven meters which seems like a lot but it's actually quite short when you put long range on here that essentially triples the range so it gets you to the 15 16 17 and that the point with that being that that's essentially the range where your damage drop off starts happening with your shotgun in any case so extremely useful and just allows you to hit a whole bunch more stuff down that line and here's the kicker when you shoot it down a line and you get a whole bunch of stuff in the pat in the back just because you're not shooting them doesn't mean they don't die because whatever you hit at the front here and you hit pain transfer ends up putting damage onto on the back as well which is phenomenal ammo bargain here is the first sorry the first of the two ways in which we reload ammo with this bolt so this means that twisted once you have twisted rounds active 
every time you kill something you get 20 percent of your magazine back now as you can imagine if there's a group of enemies that are running at you you'll just mow them down like a fire hose and that'll just keep feeding bullets back into your magazine which is fantastic uh lastly the the shoes the boots we have double time on here which means that uh, your time rift lasts or the way that uh, or the time that it suspends the enemies in the air is longer it's twice as long so again uh i wonder if it, it says i'm sure it says uh yeah so so yeah it says it suspends them for three and a half seconds so that essentially means then that the time will suspends them for seven seconds now seven seconds is no joke and by the way this works on bosses as well so you can suspend a brood mother for seven seconds and in those seven seconds you're most likely able to dump enough damage onto it to just kill her right in the air so um definitely fantastic and then the second of our reload abilities is here which is instant reload which allows you to tell it when when you teleport in behind something with hunter prey it fills up your magazine so not only are you feeding bullets back into the magazine by just killing stuff but every 4.8 seconds if you realize that your magazine is running low you can simply just hunt the prey something and you get a full mag back immediately it takes a little bit of getting used to uh, like i said on the ebb and flow of the combat with this but once you get that it is extremely satisfying way to play where you essentially dart you know into combat with hunter prey you, you have a full magazine you shoot three four five six enemies down and then once your magazine gets almost empty you're ready with another hunter prey and you go and all that time you're also time rifting stuff and everything like that so again in a co-op scenario bring a lot of utility to your team as well um when we look at the the class tree uh and i do realize that my uh, big fat face is blocking some of the view here so maybe i can just quickly adjust this to something like that there we go so then if we if we look here we're going top tree because of course we want to be um it's a firepower bolt so we want to get as much firepower additional as we can and the the kind of nodes here that that matter a lot is you want to be picking up shotgun master because you are using a shotgun of course you want to be picking up disruptive firepower which says that again every time that you use time rift you get additional weapon damage which is fantastic um you want to be picking up outrider executioner which says that every time when you want to pray you get additional weapon damage which is also great and you just want to be picking up everything that gives you additional close range damage because that's your bread and butter and anything that you know boosts your weapon damage for any other weird reason like for instance attacking things from behind which again you'll be doing a lot because you hunt the prey and that makes you land behind an enemy what's very important here is picking a bounty hunter which just gives you a fat nice 15 percent increase of damage to elites and then you definitely want the oddity summation because you want the increased magazine size which uh, takes you from i'm speaking on a correction here i should have probably checked this before the video but i think it takes you from 11 or 12 bullets to like 16 um or 16 or 18 or something like that which is quite a lot with 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 the shotgun and then lastly you also want cold calculation which says that for any enemy that's in close range your weapon damage is increased by eight percent as well so as i mentioned once you hunt the prey into a group of enemies there's like five or six enemies standing around that's six times eight percent additional weapon damage that you get just from standing around these things but that's it that's basically the bolt um i i really like the change that they brought into time rift here because i was already a fan of time rift and this just makes it like mwah, chef's kiss like really good and again this is a build that is equally good solo satisfying to play but also just really fun playing in a co-op scenario where your teammates will definitely enjoy the fact that you are just popping these enemies up into the air and basically providing like great cc and uh, you know great utility to the team but as i said that's it those are the two builds um and those are the two builds that i play when i play trickster which is not a lot <laughs> and that's the reason as i've said that trickster was my first choice out of the four videos that i'm gonna make after the buff patch but uh, let me know in the comments down below if you enjoy any of these two builds if you've tried them out if there's something that you'd like me to try out maybe there's a mod that you've seen that you think you have a better idea of something else that i should put in there but um most of all just have fun playing the game and thank you so much for watching especially if you made it this far go ahead and check out the description down below my discord link is there jump in there there's a whole bunch of like-minded gamers on here on there rather that enjoy outriders but also other games and there's ways for you to grow up group up with those people and play on 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 um you know in, in a co-op scenario uh if you need help and anything like that 
um and other than that i think that basically that's basically it so thank you so much for watching as i said and uh, it's just super important to me that you have a fantastic morning a great afternoon and an awesome evening wherever you are in the world and until next video fucking cheers